Today, we're diving into a seismic shift in the global technology race, one that just redrew the battle lines between Washington and Beijing. China made a move that effectively ended America's leverage in a sector the U.S. thought it controlled. We'll talk about what this means for companies like NVIDIA, why billions are about to flow in a completely different direction, and how a decision made in mere days exposes a vulnerability that could take America a decade to fix. And trust me, the most fascinating part, the one that reveals just how far ahead Beijing has been planning, I've saved that for the very end. I spent years inside one of the biggest names in media, watching editors shape stories to fit whatever narrative kept advertisers happy and executives comfortable. I saw the truth get bent, repackaged, sanitized. Eventually, I realized I had a choice. Keep playing the game or walk away and tell it straight. So I left. Now I'm here in Europe. Independent, no corporate leash, no agenda except the facts. And what I'm about to share with you today, this is the kind of story that gets smoothed over, downplayed, or spun into something unrecognizable by the mainstream outlets. Before we go any further, I need to ask something of you. If this kind of reporting matters to you, if you value the hours of research, the fact-checking, the effort to cut through the noise and avoid the fake news that floods every platform, then please hit that like button, subscribe to this channel, and if you're able, consider becoming a sponsor. It's personal for me. This work, it's not easy, and your support makes it possible. And please, stick with me until the end, because the most interesting revelation is waiting right there. So here's what happened. Just days after Xi Jinping sat down with Donald Trump in South Korea, Beijing issued an order that sent shockwaves through Silicon Valley. All state-funded data centers in China stop using foreign artificial intelligence chips. Stop purchasing them, effective immediately. This wasn't a gradual phase-out suggestion. This was a hard line, and it represents one of the most decisive steps China has taken in its quest for total technological independence. Let's be clear about what this means. For years, American semiconductor companies, especially NVIDIA and AMD, have supplied the processors that powered China's AI ambitions. Even after Washington imposed export controls, even after tensions escalated, there was still this underlying assumption that China needed us, that their domestic industry wasn't ready, that they'd always be a few steps behind. Well, Beijing just proved that assumption dead wrong. The order targets data centers that are funded by the state, those still under construction, any facility that's 30% complete or less. They're now prohibited from buying or installing foreign chips. Facilities already operational, they might get exemptions for now, but even those will face audits, gradual replacements. The message from Beijing couldn't be clearer. China's future in AI will be built on Chinese technology, period. And here's where it gets interesting. This move it didn't come out of nowhere. This is the culmination of over a decade of planning, investment, and strategic positioning. But what makes it so striking right now is the confidence behind it. Beijing isn't scrambling. They're not desperately trying to replace American chips with inferior substitutes. They believe genuinely believe that their domestic industry, companies like Huawei, Alibaba, their processors, can stand on their own. You want to talk about leverage? Washington loves to talk about how China depends on American technology, how export controls give the U.S. power, bargaining chips. But here's the uncomfortable truth. Beijing just flipped the script. With the flip of a switch, they stopped purchasing U.S. chips because those imports, as they see it, no longer align with their national security framework. Meanwhile, when you look at America's dependence on China's rare earth processing dominance, that's not a problem you solve overnight. That'll take years, maybe a full decade. So who really has leverage here? NVIDIA's CEO, he basically admitted this reality. He said, and I'm paraphrasing, we went from 95% market share in China to zero. We're completely out. He couldn't imagine any policymaker thinking that was a good outcome, that whatever policy led to America losing one of the largest markets in the world was somehow wise. But that's where we are. And now billions of dollars that used to flow to American semiconductor firms, that revenue is going to Chinese tech companies. Huawei, Alibaba, and others are about to see a massive influx of state-backed investment and demand. Now, if you're wondering how China got here, how they built the capability to even consider cutting off American chips, you need to understand the strategy they've been executing for over a decade. This didn't start with Trump's export controls, and it didn't start with Biden's restrictions either. This goes back to at least 2014, when Beijing began pouring tens of billions of dollars into building a complete domestic semiconductor ecosystem. They wanted to cover everything, legacy chips for consumer electronics, advanced logic chips for AI and military applications, the whole spectrum. 
They call it algorithmic sovereignty. By 2027, Beijing wants total control over the nation's computing infrastructure. Not partial, not mostly, total. Last September, China's Cyberspace Administration ordered major tech companies to stop purchasing NVIDIA processors, citing security concerns. Around the same time, Premier Li Qiang went on state television and publicly praised the performance of domestic chips. That wasn't just propaganda. That was a signal. The government wanted everyone to know that homegrown alternatives were ready. And here's something that should worry Washington. A recent report from the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology found that Chinese AI models have improved dramatically just in the past year, even without American hardware, their software, their training techniques, they're advancing fast. So this isn't a story about China making do with second-rate technology. This is about China closing the gap maybe even leaping ahead in certain areas, and doing it on their own terms. Let me ask you something. If you were leading a country and you saw another nation using technology exports as a weapon, restricting your access whenever it suited their geopolitical goals, wouldn't you want to eliminate that vulnerability? That's exactly what Beijing is doing. They no longer want to be held hostage to Washington's flip-flopping export bans. Even if cutting off American chips means short-term setbacks, inefficiencies, they've decided that's a price worth paying for long-term security. And this decision fits into a broader political narrative that Beijing is pushing hard right now. At home, it projects technological self-reliance, national strength, the idea that China doesn't need the West. Internationally, it signals that China is ready to define its own digital future, that they're not going to play by rules written in Washington. For American policymakers, that should be a wake-up call. The assumption that the U.S. would remain the permanent leader in semiconductors, that China's chip sector would always lag behind, those assumptions are outdated. So what happens next? Well, Washington might try to tighten export controls even further, escalate the restrictions, maybe pressure allies to do the same. But every time the U.S. does that, it gives Beijing more justification to double down on self-reliance. It's a cycle that's hard to break. And the more China invests in its domestic industry, the less effective those controls become. We're entering a phase where the global AI race isn't about collaboration or interdependence. It's about separation, about who can build the most advanced technology without needing anyone else. Here's the part most people are missing. This isn't just about chips. This is about the entire architecture of global power in the 21st century. Whoever controls the most advanced AI infrastructure, they control the future of warfare, of surveillance, of economic productivity, of everything. China understands that. They've understood it for years. And now they're making moves that suggest they believe they can compete, maybe even win, without American technology. Beijing's latest policy reflects a level of confidence that wasn't there five years ago, maybe not even two years ago. They're effectively saying, we've reached a point where depending on US technology exposes us to risks we're not willing to take. And whether or not their domestic chips are truly as good as Nvidia's best offerings, that's almost beside the point. The point is, they believe they're good enough. And in geopolitics, perception, confidence that matters just as much as raw capability. For companies like NVIDIA and AMD, this is a disaster. Losing the Chinese market, that's not just a hit to quarterly earnings. That's a long-term structural shift in where revenue comes from, where growth happens. And for Washington, it's a reminder that technological dominance isn't something you can take for granted. It has to be earned, maintained, defended. And right now, the US is facing a competitor that's willing to invest, to sacrifice short-term efficiency, to play the long game in ways that American companies beholden to shareholders and quarterly reports often struggle to match. So let's bring this back around. Today, China issued an order that severs one of its last major dependencies on U.S. semiconductors. It's a move that reflects over a decade of strategic planning, billions in investment, and a growing confidence that Beijing's domestic industry is ready to compete. The ban doesn't just hurt American companies financially. It signals a shift in the global balance of power. The era where Washington could use technology as leverage, as a tool to pressure rivals, that era might be ending. And what comes next? That's a competition where self-reliance, not interdependence, defines who has power. The question we should all be asking is this. Can the United States adapt? Can American industry, American policymakers, move fast enough to maintain a competitive edge in a world where China is no longer dependent on U.S. technology? Or are we about to watch a decade-long shift where Beijing pulls ahead? 
not because they invented something radically new, but because they committed to a strategy and stuck with it while Washington debated, hesitated, and assumed it would always be on top. I don't have all the answers. Nobody does. But what's clear is that this competition has entered a new phase, a phase that's more defined, more adversarial, and where the stakes couldn't be higher. China just made its move. Now we wait to see how Washington responds. Before I let you go, let me recap the key points here. China ordered all state-funded data centers to stop using foreign AI chips. This decision ends a major US leverage point and reflects Beijing's confidence in its domestic semiconductor industry. Companies like Nvidia just lost access to one of the world's largest markets, while Chinese firms like Huawei are about to see billions flow their way. This isn't a sudden move, it's the result of over a decade of planning and investment aimed at achieving what Beijing calls algorithmic sovereignty, and ultimately it signals a shift in the global AI race from interdependence to self-reliance with profound implications for who holds power in the coming decades. If this kind of analysis is valuable to you, please hit that like button, subscribe, and consider sponsoring this channel. Your support makes this work possible, and I genuinely appreciate every single one of you who chooses to back what we're building here. I'll see you in the next one.